What is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and today I've got a really special video for you. Now, I'm aware I say that every single video, but I'm going to be taking this pile of hardware here to build my new personal 4K gaming and editing rig for 2019. Without any further ado though, let's jump straight into it. The Game Max Strike RGB mechanical keyboard may be the best value gaming keyboard on the market right now. With individual RGB backlighting, an Utamu red mechanical switch on every key and anti-ghosting, it's a great option for those looking to buy their first mechanical keyboard or upgrade their existing peripherals without breaking the bank. Learn more and check it out in the links in the description below. Now as with any build, we're going to start off with the CPU and with the motherboard. Now I opted to go the Intel route for this build and I know the comments is going to be a literal uproar. Now the reason I chose to do so is that the Core i9-9900K, which isn't a cheap CPU, is fantastic for gaming and editing. Intel in some circumstances, not all, uh, does still hold the gaming edge, especially with single threaded performance uh, over the Ryzen 3rd generation lineup. Are they probably a little bit better value for money? Uh, yes, but with a build this expensive, it doesn't really matter. My Ryzen third generation builds are gonna be coming very, very shortly, so make sure you get subscribed uh, so you don't miss them. Now, for the motherboard, I didn't wanna to go too expensive. I didn't wanna just throw money uh, down the drain, so to speak. I opted for this. This is the Asus Prime uh, Z390A. Now this motherboard here sits on the highest Intel chipset so it gives us the widest feature set and has everything we need with a colour scheme that's going to match today's build really nicely indeed. The first thing you want to do with your motherboard is install the CPU. It's a simple case of lifting up uh, that retention arm, taking the CPU out of the box. This is actually the press packaging, you will get a slightly nicer box if you buy the Core i9 uh, but it will leave purchase links in the description below for Amazon and that kind of thing for the latest up-to-date pricing. Installing an Intel CPU is easy, just simply line the triangle on the CPU up with the triangle on the CPU socket and drop the chip into place. Now, once the CPU is in place, you may want to give it a little wiggle, but then it's a simple case of lowering the bracket, popping the retention arm down with a bit of pressure, but no force, and jobs are good em. Now, while the motherboard is out of the case and still really easy to access, you want to install your M.2 uh, SSD storage if you've got any. In this case, the 970 Evo. I've also got this, frankly, pretty crap crucial drive uh, with my Windows install from my old system that I'm also popping in because in all honesty, I'm a bit lazy and I'm hopefully gonna get some work done on this PC in about an hour's time. The final component I'd recommend installing at this stage is the memory, is the RAM. I've got this white Vengeance Pro RGB kit from Corsair that fits perfectly with the color scheme and general aesthetic. I'll probably end up grabbing another 16 gigabyte kit to give 32 gigs of memory, which is gonna be better for video editing. For gaming though, 16 gigs in 2019 is still more than enough. I've covered installing memory many, many times before, but it's a simple case of lining up the notch on the dim slot with the notch on the dim and applying firm pressure evenly on both sides of the RAM stick. It's going to provide a satisfying click sound to show you that it's in, and all you've got to do is repeat for all of your memory dim slots. See, that was so easy. With our motherboard assembly pretty much as far advanced as it can be, it's time to move it on into the case. And this is a brand new chassis from the guys at Corsair. Uh, the successor to the 460X, the hugely popular chassis, this is the creatively named 465X. Uh, now, naming aside, this is a really, really solid case. You've got this lovely, large tempered glass side panel. Uh, we've got a vertical GPU mount, some really, really good airflow clearance at the front here with a nice tempered glass panel again, and one of their latest IQ compatible uh, fan controllers with three included Alan 120s. Uh, they're sort of highest end fans uh, that look utterly fantastic and are crammed full of addressable RGBs. 
In order to get the motherboard in the case, we first want to take off uh, both of the case's side panels. At this stage, you also want to grab uh, the metal I.O. shield from the motherboard box. Uh, installing it's pretty easy. Take it to the back of the case with the circular audio port on the bottom and clip in each of the four. Each of the four corners and that really is all there is to it. Now, pretty handily, Corsair have actually installed all the necessary standoffs for ATX motherboards already. So we've got to slot it in, screw it in, and that's really all there is to it. Now with our motherboard nice and easily installed, it's about time we popped in our CPU cooler. I opted for the Corsair H100i RGB Platinum SE and I actually reviewed it not long ago in the card section uh, card section here, uh, do check that video out, it's a really really solid cooler and most importantly performs well but ties in with the colour scheme of white uh, and some black accents that I uh, elected to go for. Now it's at this stage of the build where it'd be easy to get carried away installing our graphics cards, some RGB strips and putting in all the bells and whistles. But while we've still got space, we want to pop in the power supply. I opted for an 850 watt unit, this one from Corsair with an 80 plus gold certification, meaning it's super duper efficient, a fully modular interface, so you only plug in the cables you really need and cables that are individually braided in white, uh, which is gonna look fantastic with the color scheme. So roll the time lapse. Now continuing on with the theme of cable management, I'm also going to pop in our headphone and mic jack, our power button, uh, hard drive indicator LEDs, USB ports with our front panel connectors, uh, which is going to make our life easier after we install the graphics card. Now with much of the cables plugged in and cable managed up and ready to go, it's time for the exciting bit, expansion cards. Now this system being my personal rig has a cool, a couple of cool little bits in it. This is a 10 gigabit networking card uh, for fast transfer speeds between this PC and my storage server. I've got this Intel Optane SSD 900P, which is a 500 gigabyte PCIe drive uh, with super quick response times. Think of it uh, as someone with really, really quick reaction times. When editing and using scratch disks and Premiere, this thing is a dream. Finally though, the bit you've all been waiting for, the graphics card. This is of course Nvidia's brand new RTX 2080 Super. Now, uh, one of the best graphics cards that Nvidia have right now, this is hot off the press. While the RTX 2080 Ti still reigns supreme as the fastest gaming GPU that you can buy in 2019, at least when this video is out, goodness knows what Nvidia are gonna do next. Uh, this is a really pretty happy medium. It's gonna be capable of 4K gaming at 60 frames per second consistently, and it's gonna work a treat in Adobe's Premiere Pro, uh, which is my primary editing software. Without any further ado though, let's install it.
montage out of the way and doesn't this system just look incredible, it's time to jump into some games to see how this system uh, really performs. First up is Forza Horizon 4, which is one of my favourite games of the year by far. If we head into settings, uh, we can take a look at the video quality. Uh, so we can pop up the dynamic render quality to ultra uh, with 4K resolution. We've got V-Sync, of course, off, uh, which is going to help our frame rate nicely. Everything else is pretty much as is. You can jump into the advanced settings at the top here, but honestly, I don't really see the need. If we save and continue... Uh, I hate it when you have to restart games for them to work. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually drive over to a sort of a race scenario in this game so we can get a more accurate uh, perspective of the performance. You can see in the top right corner of the screen we've got the frame rate and the GPU usage. The GPU usage is nice and high which is what we want. Uh, we don't want it pinned at 100 but somewhere close is good as well as our frame rate which is currently about 77 uh, frames per second. I do actually urge people sometimes not to look quite so closely at the frame rate Ooh, what car do we want? Ooh. Sorry, I was saying there before I got completely distracted that I urge people sometimes not to just completely focus on the frame rate. I think people get completely obsessed with it and it's something that's easily changed with a resolution or some fidelity uh, adjustments. And more look at the overall gaming experience on balance. And Forza is doing itself proud here. This snowy night scene may be the best I've ever seen it. And that RTX 2080 Super Sure is flexing its muscles, that's for sure. Obviously that frame rate really helps. I mean, we're pinned at like 75 to 85 frames per second. And the game is super duper smooth. I really hope this is all coming through. Just an old shortcut was a shortcut. Yeah, another, another shortcut through the trees. Bit of character. Come on. That's third. That's second. That's first. Yes, look at that. Break, 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 break. Oh, that was tight. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> See, it's diff I don't know how people are, like, gaming YouTubers. It's difficult to commentate and play decently at the same time. It Imagine if I was using, like, a wheel and gear shifter and stuff, which I do have. Oh, <laughs> it would be a mess. No, 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 no. Oh, that is, that's a wide line. It's a wider than normal line. Oh, I'm in second now. Always, always in second. I, I don't know. Well, the controller worked. I did a lot better than last time. The next title we're going to give uh, a bit of a whirl is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, an old favourite of many, slightly easier to run, so this should be interesting. If there's any games that I'm missing that you'd like to see, pop them in the comments section down below. We're going to have a 4K full screen, of course. We're not on a laptop power savings. No way. Um, and then everything else on automatic, which is assigning us eight times MSAA, which is as high as it goes, uh, high, which is as high as it goes, uh, and you get the kind of gist. We're leaving V-Sync and Motion Blur off as they are going to hammer our frame rate uh, quite significantly. I'm going to go for Dust 2, which is the classic map. I have had to go for um, bots on because for some reason my online matchmaking just isn't working. Um, so sorry, I'll try and get that fixed uh, for the next one. Regardless though, this should give us a pretty good uh, idea of performance and actually even if you're online your performance should be slightly better because your computer hasn't got to sort of create all the bots and manage the, the bots if you will. Yes, go on Martin, you've had it mate. Martin, you've absolutely had it buddy. Oh look at that, got a hit on Martin. Who's that? Get out of here, get out of here. Get out of here, no, go. Oh, got seven health. That I'm no CS:GO expert, but that ain't good. But I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hide in the corner. No way, no way, no way. Oh, I've died. Right, so let's give this another go. I am more determined this time than ever before to not suck at CS:GO. Come on, right, right, come on. I am actually gonna start like practicing this just, just for the sake of yes, lovely stuff. Come on, Graham. I'm right by your side, mate. I mean, the game looks great. I mean, we're 160 FPS at 4K Ultra. That's pretty sick. Where have you gone? No, no, what are you doing that for, mate? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, oh, yes. Lovely jobly. Easy box. That's what we need. 
Oh, I got it. Oh, I got his. I got his weapon. That's. Oh, yes. I definitely need a better mouse. I'm not on the controller anymore. I'm sure you'll be pleased to hear that. I see bullets. Where are you coming from? Yes. Go on. Go on, George. You're off, mate. Let's have it. Come on, teammates. Come on. Pull your bloody weight. Yes, we won. Oh, I'm taking all credit for that. Two and a half grand we got for that. Lovely stuff. This way. Yeah, I knew that. This is very exciting. I can see the appeal of CSGO already. I mean, I have played it a little bit before, but... Oh, tactical grenade. Lovely stuff from Toby. Yes. Oh, oh, what's happened? I have a feeling. We have some friends. Oh, no. Okay, then. Having had far too much fun there in CSGO, it's now time for a bit of GTA 5, which is my favourite game ever. As you can see here, we've got everything on pretty much the maximum settings with VSync disabled. And what we're going to do is we're going to run into the uh, benchmarking mode, which gives us a bit of standard kind of sequence to see just how well uh, this system copes, especially on 4K at the highest possible settings. Oh. My. God. <laughs> That's insane. It's like 100 frames per second at 4K with everything maxed out apart from V-Sync, but V-Sync's stupid anyway. Oh my word. And it looks incredible. Oh my, wow. I mean, we're not dropping below 85 frames per second. We're sitting consistently above... What a beast. What a... Oh my, that, oh my god, that's, that's, that's bonkers. To think that this game looks so good, it looks so realistic, even today, it's been out, what, five years? And every new GPU generation that comes out, every incredible NVIDIA graphics card that gets made, because let's be honest, the past few years, NVIDIA have had the fastest GPU on the market consistently. This game levels up each and every time, and I mean, fair play to Rockstar Games and fair play to NVIDIA for that 2080 super. With that being said though, I think that just about wraps up today's video. If you did enjoy it, a big old like rating, get subscribed and ding dong that notification bell. Hit me up on Instagram, it's at geekawat and at jamescousins underscore underscore if you'd like to see some murmurings of my personal life. That sounded weird. As always though, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next Geekawat video.